here I am so happy to have you here with me please like the video as you make your way on over here to uh, watch the content so something that I would like to enter the african-american female lexicon is the Negro improvement program or NIP the NIP right it's a very funny way to put it because we are basically trying to nip you know how people say nip tuck so to nip is to cut something off or nip it in the bud basically to nip or to nip at someone basically you, you think of cutting you think of biting you think of otherwise you know um severing one thing from the other right so we are being encouraged to actually nip the Negro Improvement Program by um, Dr. Ralph Richard Banks, whose work I have been interested in for some time. Um, the interview that I'm about to share with you was done in 2011. So this is at a time where the landscape of this kind of conversation was quite different. Um, it wasn't as welcome, and you can actually see the person who was inter interviewing him as a Black male becoming slightly agitated with uh, the subject matter at hand. So basically, the Negro Improvement Program is what Black women have been doing ever since. We have, I mean, for a really long time, but markedly, I would say, especially since becoming the most educated group of people in America, what we have done, we've said to ourselves, you know, I'm going to reach back and I'm going to lift every voice and sing. I'm going to get my community. I'm going to get that black man out of jail because I know that he was wronged and those police, they pulled him over and they put drugs on him, which is very true. And thank God for cameras, cell phone cameras, uh, you know, body cameras on police. Now we know that that kind of thing is true. We're like, you know, when he does his three to six years, you know, I'm going to marry him and I'm going to hold him down. I'm going to put money on his books and I'm going to ride or die. Right. And the type of results that has yielded is moot. So, so many women, I mean, sure, there are the cases where, you know, black men come out and they do right by the women that they're with. Um, and it's okay, but by and large, you have a group of men and, and this, I shouldn't have to say not all black men, because first of all, not all black men have felonies or, you know, charges on their record. They have, some have clean records. I shouldn't have to do that. But basically, um, African-American women outnumbering African-American men by over 2 million, we do end up dealing with the criminal aspect of our community. And that's what makes so many of us so many times willing to take penitentiary risks for a man who in reality is um, is just a high risk person who really isn't worth it. So these women, you know, do this Negro improvement program where they play mammy and handmaiden and ride or die chick and pick me. And they're just like, you know what? Um, I want to be with you and I'm not going to sell you out. I'm not going to sell you up the river. I'm not going to betray my race. I'm going to stay down. I'm going to stay loyal. I'm going to stay, you know, good old faithful. Problem in this is this guy comes out institutionalized. There's a certain way of behavior that he has. There is trauma. There is mental abuse that he's gone through in those uh, prisons with uh, police officers, oftentimes who you would be surprised how jealous of Black men, certain non-Black police officers can be, especially when you show up to the prison beautiful and you show up healthy and you show up, you know, they're expecting, you know, you know, the drug dealer's girlfriend to show up as a meth head or some heroin addict, you know, prostitute, sex worker, whatever. And then she comes up there and, you know, she's about to graduate from college and, you know, she he's one of the only guys, she's maybe been with two or three guys in her life. And they're just like, how does he get her? So because of that, and because of so many different reasons, I mean, even if it's just the envy of the physique, whatever it is, you know, they, they end up going through a lot of abuse and they either have to take the abuse or there's compounded sentencing, there's compounded, you know, harsh treatment, police brutality, X, Y, Z. Problem is sister girl goes to get him. 
and he's already so traumatized and so beat up by everything that he experienced, he's really not fit psychologically to be with. So even if it was, okay, well, he doesn't have to make m more money than me. Now you have a mindset that you can't be because you are not a therapist, you are not a counselor, you are not trained. Even the black women who claim to have these psychology degrees, so many of them we're just sitting on their hands in college, a psychology degree. Everybody knows that that's the MRS, okay? When when you hear a woman say she majored in psychology, she just went to college to get married because it's literally the easiest degree to get. In fact, when you are a law school hopeful, right? When you plan on getting, you know, a JD or when you plan on, you know, a certain kind of master's degree program, it is recommended to major in something like psychology just so that your GPA can be high enough and impressive enough to get into those prestigious schools. Because again, psychology is not exactly, <laughs> it's not exactly rocket science, it's, uh, science out here. And I will say for even other YouTubers who claim, I mean, honestly, maybe they picked up the DSM, but these are not degreed women. So you should take certain things with a grain of salt. Anyhow, so the NIP program is just that where black women, you know, seek to lift black men up to where they are at. And you end up spending eight to 13 years with a man and having three kids with him only for him to have four more kids with three more women. And, you know, there's drugs, there's more incarceration, there's in and out of prison, there is, you know, silly things like getting your car towed because he didn't understand where to park. And now there's a $700 fine here and a $400 fine there to get the car from being impounded and all kinds of things that are going on if, until you realize, you know, I tried so hard and got so far but in the end it doesn't even matter <laughs> right uh, a very true song story of my life theme song for me right lincoln park it happens a lot and ralph richard banks dr ralph richard banks harvard graduate is saying as an african-american man married to an african-american wife yo black women through the decades and through the generations you have fought the good fight and it doesn't even serve you if you're not biracial or some kind of a red bone give up give up give up the good fight right and Elevate yourself, worry about yourself, because not only is your partner corrupted, but being in the company of such a partner will corrupt you too, right? So there are certain things that African-American women think are normal that are not normal to the point where you have a lot of non-Black guys all over TikTok, and they're just like, you know, I love Black women. They're so easy to get with. And when somebody says a group of women is easy to get with, well, that that is insulting, even if they don't intend for it to be insulting. But they're like, you know, I promise all you have to do is just be nice to these women in their, in their floor. Think about that. Think about that as a, a, a non-Black man saying, all you have to do is be nice to these women. And it doesn't even really matter, you know, how tall you are, how you look, you know, you just show them real love and, and they come undone. And he, and he's not saying that the guys that I've watched are not saying that as pimps or players or anything like that. Like they're just swimming in black women. They're just like, all I was was nice to her. All I was was real to her. Right. Whereas, you know, African-American men think that that is being a simp. Oh, he takes care of her. He provides things for her. He fights for her. He defends her. He loves her, protects her. Oh, that's being a simp. That's not being a man. Right. And these non-black men are like, that's how I got her. So yeah, you know, I, she out earned me. <laughs> we went to college together. She ended up being a lawyer. I ended up being an artist. She out earned me. She supported me and she always loved me and was faithful to me. And this is, you know, Joe Blow with blonde hair and blue eyes. And when you think about it, black women, I mean, when you look at these smash or pass viral things, you see how used to being disrespected that black women are. And people are so quick to call us masculine. Oh, you're too aggressive. You, and, and like, we're so used to being disrespected, called out of our name, talked down to, you know, we can just stand in line and somebody, nah, I don't do dark skins. Well, the majority of us are dark skins. The majority of us are dark skin. So this ride or die chick, you know, it may help if you are, you know, half Filipino, half Mexican, half white, half anything other than black, but in a lot of cases, if you don't have the complexion for protection, all of that work, it doesn't matter how good of a person you are. Uh, Dr. Omar said it best, you know, you can you can be a total Oreo, right? Because I am. 
It can be a total, you know, white adjacent sounding music, listening to culture raised around like, like being black, is just too much. And it will never, it will, it will never trump whiteness to what I would consider, you know, a, a good majority of black men. It will never trump that lighter, paler skin. So I'm going to go on ahead and play this interview. It's very fascinating. And you can actually hear the male interviewer who was interviewing Dr. Um, I'm just going to call him Rick Banks. Um, as he tells these women to give up on the Negro Improvement Program, you can see how entitled he feels. Um, not Rick, but uh, the interviewer, how he entitled he feels to the work and service of black women. And um, well, I'll take my word for it. Let's just go. And we have more black women, right, graduating from college, two to one to black men. You throw in incarceration rates, you throw in uh, the unemployment rates, and you're saying there's just not enough black men. Well, there, there, are, there are not enough black men for all of the college-educated black women in particular. I want to stop here with the way that he framed this, because I think uh, a lot of black men actually give this kind of black man a hard time, the interviewer, because he's got light skin and light eyes. And, you know, they like to emasculate that type and make fun of that type, right? Because they're intimidated by them. The same thing happens to me when women are intimidated by me. They make fun of me. They, they don't leave me alone. They obsess in, in their hatred and jealousy. Anyhow, so you hear him saying, well, to, to Rick Banks, he's saying, well, you're saying there's not enough black men, as in that's your narrative that you're spinning. And I'm just like, so many of these black men, thanks to watching Kevin Samuels, you know, they're all, they're all of a sudden these statistics and CDC experts. And I'm just like, there literally is not enough. If we are outnumber you by almost 2.5 million, there literally is not enough. But he's saying this in a way to say, well, well, you know, that's your opinion, uh, Rick Banks. And it's like, no, it's a, it's a fact. It's, this is a Fendi fact. Moving along. Or that have the type of husbands that they want to have. The type that they want to have. Now, I, I put this out, and we had this conversation uh, yesterday, and a lot of people were mm -hmm. chiming in. And I decided to ask for questions from viewers. And one of the questions, simply put, is do black women deserve better than what black men have to offer. That seems like a, a very heavy uh, uh, question there, but is that essentially what it is? Do we not measure up to the quality of black women right now? That's really a great way to put it. And I will admit that I usually think about it from the other perspective, yeah. which is that, should, is it fair to ask black women to sacrifice their own happiness on the altar, as it were, of black men's struggles? And what? Okay, I think not. What is that? Uh, I think not. Okay, what's that sacrifice I, I have, necessarily when we're talking about, and I asked you this question yesterday, is it always marrying down if the person you're marrying doesn't make as much money or have the same level of education? Could be a good guy. Yeah, he could be a good guy, and, and lots of relationships work across classes, that's true. Uh, but it's also the case that for everyone, not simply for the women, but for the men as well, Having a, a spouse who is matched to you educationally in terms of your outlook, your aspirations, your experiences, that's a positive thing. So it's actually not a great thing for the wife or the husband if they're in a mismatched relationship. All right. And we know a lot of conversations were started yesterday because of this topic. And I had one of these conversations at my house with Mrs. Holmes. And one of these uh, things that keeps coming up is how do you, and the word I think my wife used, was reprogram, if you will, black women, because you're suggesting they need to be open to dating outside of their race. But, you know, a lot of black women just like brothers. They like the black man. Right. So Now, I want to stop there because, again, you have the panel where Kevin Samuels asked non-black women to uh, speak on why, speak authoritatively on why they are married more often than we are. And he says to us, well, they must be doing something right because they're more married than you are. First of all, they're not dealing with the ratio that we're dealing with. Black men like to talk about their oppression when it suits them. They like to talk about police brutality and being gunned down when it suits them. But in reality, 
The other, the other opposite is like, okay, well, it also suits our argument when we say we outnumber you by two million. So of course, we are going to be less married than any other group of women because it's not normal for a group of women to outnumber men in that way, unless there was some kind of a war. I mean, bombs dropped Pearl Harbor, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, like Nicaragua, like unless there was some kind of a war or extermination that took place. These numbers are not normal. And you will hear these people all over certain areas of black male YouTube where they say, oh, it's normal for women to outnumber men. But um, I silenced that argument when I showed on my channel and I can uh, link the video below to where I show the ratio of every almost every country, every recognized country on earth. It's a long video. And their ratio of men to women is often one to one. One to 1.2, one to 1.3, one to one. Like, like it's very rare that it's like, like a two to one thing, like, like what we have with African-Americans where it's almost three to one. So of course there's an excess group. And what I love that Mr. Holmes, this interviewer said, he's like some black women, they just like the brothers and they just won't leave them alone. And they just are waiting for one. And Oprah Winfrey even talked about this because people have this narrative, oh, black women can't interracially date because y'all are so ugly. Nobody wants you. In reality, it's the opposite. It's that African-American women don't want anybody else. They want to find their unicorn good black man. They don't want anybody else. They don't want to be with anybody else. You should see black women like mm -mm, pink peen. No way. Mm -mm, I can't stand the way old white men chew, the way they smell, wet pennies, wet dog. Mm -mm, right. We actually have, you know, preferences. <laughs> the way that they prefer what is not us is the same way that we prefer what is them. It's, it's a very toxic relationship and they're not acknowledging this. They're just saying, black woman, you can't. Black woman, you're undesirable. Black woman, you're broken. Black woman, you're worthless. Black woman, you're nothing. Black woman, nobody wants you. Nobody loves you. Everybody hates you. Where are you going to go but with us? That's their narrative. It's sometimes people create these really fantastical narratives in order to massage their broken egos. I mean, I'll see people get on TikTok all day and they just create circumstances. And I'm just like, like there is a guy who went viral for saying, why do African-American women have a problem with, you know, black men? And, and the guy had so much extra lip meat. He looked like, I mean, Dana Dane um, stitched him. You'll be able to, I'm sure you've seen the footage where he's like, you know, if I do that, that's my choice and blah, blah, blah. And he just looked like, there isn't a black woman alive who would want to be with that man but to stroke his own ego he created that narrative for, for himself because it made him feel wanted and coveted that that was something for him but in reality um a lot of black women don't want to date out and what this man is asking rick banks is how do we then reprogram black women to desire to date out and that is the work that Crystal and Karazin has been doing. Because in reality, black love, black love, black love, I have black love in my life. In reality, we need at least 2 million black women to find love somewhere else. And that will never not be a fact. Not right here, not right now. We need at least 2 million black women to marry out. How can you be mad at that? You do you because you want them to die alone, right? You don't want them to ever be paired. If every black woman had a black man in America, there'd still be two million women excess. And of course, they want to talk about polygamy. Not so. That's bigamy in America. It's illegal. Can't happen. Can't happen. So right. if you're just not right. attracted naturally, why why have them give up on finding a black man? Right. That's that's a great question. Uh, and the issue, the way I think of that is, is that women have been asked to carry a great load. Uh, black women shoulder a lot of the burden, in short, of black men's struggles. And I am asking women to put the burden down. Uh, many women think that they're attracted to black men. They are attracted to black men. 
But attraction itself is complicated. And one of the things that I discovered in the course of writing this book is that there's a whole host of fears and desires and anxieties that animate black women's attraction to black men. Okay, and on that though, I got another question from a viewer, Judy, uh, sent in said, well, it sounds like you're saying, why should black women give up the good fight? You know, you're not trying to, you're not telling them to take on an, a project of fixing a man necessarily, but why just give up on black men? Right, you, you, that is another great question. I, I actually am asking black women to give up the good fight because give the up fight the good hasn't fight? been successful. The, the, the fight has not been successful. This is what a, a friend of mine, Carolyn Edgar, calls a Negro improvement project, uh, which is what a lot of black women undertake. Okay, so I call that the Negro Improvement Program. We're going to go ahead and call that the Negro Improvement Project and add that to our lexicon of, um, you know, how different women they have added to the lexicon, you know, Dusty, Tyrone, blah, blah, blah. Let's go on ahead and add this because one, some of the things we say are inherently disrespectful and, um, a lot of it's really entertaining, but when you're trying to have a respectful conversation and you can't think of anything to call a certain person but a troubled Tyrone, like that's inherently disrespectful. There's no way to make that an academic uh, <laughs> um, terminology. So um, the Negro Improvement Project is something that I feel like can actually be added to the lexicon of like, well, this is what our problem is. This is what so many of us engage in. But again, you see the way he spoke to this man. He's like, you, you, you want them to, 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 to give up the good fight? My God, look at what he's encouraging. Oh. You will never see a black man talk to a black man like this about being with a white woman. If Angela Rye marries a white guy tomorrow, black men are going to be pissed. But if Van Jones, right, because he just got divorced from a white woman, nobody cared. Nobody cared. Black men are celebrated for doing what black women are denigrated for doing. They are celebrated for finding white women, non-black women, Asian women, Latino women, non-black Latino women. But when we do the same, we are ridiculed not only by black men, but also by black women especially the ones who are a little less attractive, you know, maybe they've made, the, the black women who have made some of the poorest decisions in their lives, I mean, with drugs, with multiple baby daddies, with, you know, financial decisions, with credit, with, with living situations, with what they've done with their body, with, with what they've done with their relationships in their lives, they will often be the ones, you know, the big disgusting loud voice in the back well 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 you should and i love a strawberry and all they get told is oh good girl oh thanks for looking out but nobody wants them and they feel like if they with their rhetoric beat you over the head from leaving then somebody will want them and call them good but in reality most men are looking for a look of course they would fancy a woman to be nice and kind and decent but in reality, as long as you have a look, he'll be like, you know what, I can work that other stuff out. So when they're like, oh, what do you bring to the table? They're only going to ask you that if they don't think you're worth it in the looks department. So get out of there. And often the results are not so great. So the, the strategy has been counterproductive. Uh, it doesn't help African-Americans for us to have black men and black women locked in bad relationships mm -hmm. and raising children in households where the parents quarrel and ultimately divorce. Well, That's look, not a win for anyone. It is law professor Ralph Richard Banks. The book is called Is Marriage for White People. I think it went on sale on the second this week and it has started a conversation that I'm sure will continue. Please understand that saying that man's book went on sale, understand that that was shade. Now, Rick Banks is so intelligent. Like for me personally, I'm a bit of a blonde. Yes, that's my natural hair. I get it. It's it's dark. It's 1B. I think you're natural black. But I'm a blonde. So many things and conversations that I have, I oftentimes can't tell what's shade and what's not. But Rick Banks is so intelligent. He caught the shade the whole time. And you can see the facial expressions he was making as the shade was being thrown. So and that book went on sale because nobody's buying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right, ladies, what do you think? I want to hear from you. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And I do mean like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, join my community. Because honestly, for the most part, I would really like to have these conversations in a much more private way where it's just the people who matter to the dialectic having it as opposed to outsiders jumping in to derail the dialectic. So again, I am Uppity Unicorn and I am out of here. You want to argue? I can't argue with you. You mad. I can't argue.